We are on finally. Welcome back to Zoom 2019, the 2019 version. I'm excited uh, for uh, an incredible semester that we have planned. We've gone through and planned out the next several weeks uh, of leadership development and leadership preparation. And I'm convinced that your leadership is going to grow significantly as we're on here in these. Well, tonight may be more like a 20 or an 18 minute leadership uh, uh, injection. That's what I started calling it because it's just, it's quick on, you know, quick on and quick off. And so what I want to do for the sake of time is I want to jump right in. Let me uh, share my screen in just a moment, but I just want to relay the foundation and remind you of some of the big ideas uh, of why we're doing this. I, I want to give you two reasons tonight why we do this and time permitted at the end. Uh, I want to, I want to uh, lay out one more challenge. You guys, you're the faithful ones. You're doing it all the time. And I so appreciate that. And, um, but I just want us to be, oh yeah, because it's been a bunch of weeks and I haven't shared a, a lot of this probably since last September. And so uh, just to kind of get us back into a flow as we jump into the rest of the fall. And so two reasons why we have Zoom. Uh, the first one is because Legacy Church has a God-sized vision to influence and impact this region and the world with God's power, truth, and love. You always hear me talk about impacting people with God's power, His truth, and His love. I believe you're on here because you want to be a part. I believe you're on here because you want to help make that happen. And so in order for us to reach more people and affect change in this culture, we need to multiply the number of leaders that we develop and unleash. And really, if you were, and that's you, and that's the desire of our heart. If people, if somebody were to ask, what does experience live and leave a legacy all about? What does it mean? It really is about seeing people experience Jesus and then equipping them and training them to learn to live for them, to, to, to help them develop, not just as a Christian, but also as a leader. And I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, one and the same, but then also to unleash them so that they can leave a legacy. It's not just about gathering people on Sunday. The Sunday gathering is to be equipped and to be Filled so that we can be unleashed and go. And so if you'll commit to being invested in and developing yourself as a leader and developing yourself as a minister, I believe your ability to uh, multiply uh, the, the difference that you make, uh, I believe that's going to become a reality. You know, your ability to make a difference, it's just going to multiply. And so can you imagine, even with just a few of us on here tonight, what kind of difference we can make if each of us not only made but followed through with that commitment? But the reality is also this goes far beyond Legacy Church. You know, uh, you're needed and you're wanted in your homes. You're needed and wanted at your, in your workplaces, in your neighborhood, maybe on your kids' teams or grandkids' teams or something, or, or you know, you're needed in your community. Uh, they're going to be region things and even world things where you're going to be needed. I said this before, and it really uh, was hitting me today. There are people that you haven't even met yet that need what you have to give. They need you to get connected. They need you to grow and develop as a leader and as a minister. They need you growing and maturing. They need you stepping out in faith, taking risks, and they need you to decide to be a difference maker because if you don't, they won't. That's reality. They won't be reached. They won't experience Jesus. And the reality is eternity is at stake for people. So don't just do this for you. Don't just develop yourself just for you. Do this for people you don't even know yet. But God has set you up and he's going to set you up to reach them. Yes, life is busy. Yes, our plates are full, but let's make it happen. Let's do our part to make it happen. Think about it. What's the price of a soul worth? You know, you, you're like, what's your best friend's eternity worth? Are they worth your time and your effort? Are they, are they worth your focus and your prayers? Are they worth you taking the time to develop yourself? Don't you think that's worth, you know, 30 minutes a week? Will you invest 30 of the 10,080 minutes of your week to your own leadership development? When, when it's put like that, it's like, of course we can. 
Of course we can. We can develop that because that's a small price to pay for radical results. Are you with me? And so trust me, I'll be honest with you, what we have planned for this semester is better than anything that's on TV. It's better than any scrolling of social media. It's better than any video game. It's better than any chore that you have to do. What you're going to get in these 30 minute chunks is going to be gold. The second reason why we have these is our world is longing and in desperate need of people who will rise up, take a stand, and really lead. See, we know more than ever before, we need godly, authentic, ethical, and excellent leaders. Our world is looking for leaders with integrity, leaders who will show them a better way, leaders who will give them hope, leaders who, are, uh, who, who they, they can rely on, and believe it or not, leaders who will demonstrate the reality of Jesus. And so what does all this look like? Again, uh, the baseline for all this, we need to understand leadership is simply influence. And every single one of us has influence. You have influence. Think about it. Parents lead their children. One spouse typically leads the other. Managers lead their employees. Life group leaders and dream team leaders lead their life groups and their dream team. Coaches lead their team. Friends lead their friends. I, I've shared this for years uh, that the shyest, quietest person is going to influence 10,000 people in their lifetime. And that was a statistic before the advent of social media. And so think about the opportunity that every one of us, even those who may not be technologically savvy, even those who may not necessarily be on, on, on uh, uh, Facebook or Instagram all that much, your opportunity to influence has been magnified and multiplied. But a lot of times we don't see ourselves as leaders because most people have a bent. I hope that's not us because I hope we're seeing ourselves differently. I hope that our minds are being renewed. But a lot, most people are more inclined to focus on their shortcomings and their failures than viewing themselves as leaders. But what could happen if we began to see ourselves through God's eyes? not through our circumstances, not through maybe our past, but through God's eyes. We would understand that we're leaders simply because of who we are in Christ. We would understand, everybody on here would know that, that they're a leader because they're a son because they're the bride of Christ, because they're royalty, because they're overcomers, because they're believers. We begin to see ourselves uh, differently. We begin to see ourselves according to our position in Christ. And because of that, we would give ourselves to our own development. I believe that's the right thing to do in light of everything that Jesus has done for us. I believe we're obligated to give ourselves to development, to do exactly what everyone on here is doing now. Why? Because as we grow, think about this, as we grow and as we improve, as you grow and as you improve, you're going to make a greater difference in the lives of the people around you. And that's why we're here. That's why we're alive. We're alive on this planet to make a difference, period. And so that's why we give ourselves to that. We know that people aren't born leaders. Leadership is developed. That's why we're doing Zoom. You know, influence and impact can increase. It can be multiplied. You may think, I haven't really done all that much, you know, when I'm retired or semi-retired or whatever it may be. But understand, even now, leadership is developed and influence and impact can uh, be multiplied. Understand, inside each one of us is world-changing potential that's waiting to be developed and unleashed. That's not just a cute statement. That's reality, even if you've never seen yourself in that light before. We all have potential, and potential is great. Everyone in here is filled with potential, and that's wonderful, but that alone doesn't make a difference. We can't help anybody on potential alone. Right, we've got to go out there and do it. Think about it. You know, you heard me share this last year. The graveyard is the richest place on the planet because the infinite amount of potential 
that's buried in it. It's filled with people who will never, uh, who, who never develop their potential. It's filled with people who never pursued their purpose, who never fulfilled their purpose. And so in a graveyard are buried countless dreams, uh, in inventions and opportunities. They all died with those people. And I just want to encourage you. Let's not let that be said of us. It may be said of other people, but let's not that, let's not let that be said of us and not just legacy zoom, but legacy church. Don't, don't take your potential to the grave. I love the statement that they always say in football, let's leave it all on the field. And so we want to help you develop and unleash your potential so that doesn't happen. And so I want you to be able to see the big picture in this. I'm just kind of blasting through some things, relaying a foundation, but here's the reality. The more you grow, the more you develop yourself as a leader, the more influence you're going to have, right? And so the more influence you have, the more people you're going to reach. The more people you reach, the greater impact you're going to have on this world, the greater legacy you're going to leave. And so the more, this whole thing is about building people. It's about building you so that you can live and leave a legacy, you know, and that's the goal. That's what we all want. And so time permitting, I hope uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, get to me, but I want to jump in and do one more thing. Those are two reasons why we have this, but I want to take a few minutes to just kind of uh, share a, one final vital foundation for great and effective leadership. We don't want to just have leaders. We want to be effective at what we do. It's one decision that we need to make if we're going to get the most out of our times each and every week. You might be one decision away from a completely different life. And I know I'm talking to the ones who were so faithful all throughout last semester. And so it kind of feels like I'm preaching to the choir, but the one decision is decide to be consistent. Decide to be faithful. Decide, you know, to, to be here every Wednesday night. De decide to follow through on your commitment to develop yourself as a leader and as a minister, because when you're consistent, you're reliable. And reliable leaders are followable. Who would follow uh, an unreliable leader? May, you might, but not for long, right? Because you wouldn't tolerate it. Faithfulness and consistency are keys to effective leadership, if nothing else. And so uh, we, we've all heard that 90% of the battle is just showing up, you know, and so just show up, just keep coming, just keep getting on these calls, just keep doing the action steps, just keep going for it. If you remember, I shared last semester the story of the tortoise and the hare, and we know that, and so for the sake of time, I'm not going to belabor that point, but if you remember that story, there are a few things that I shared that I, that I think bear repeating. I'm not doing every point, but there are a couple things that we can learn from and apply from that story. The first one is to win we need to steadily put in work even if it's slow and it's okay if stuff happens slow we all want the microwave we all want the fast but it's okay if it happens slow consistently doing what you need to do makes goal achievement possible just being consistent if you keep doing it you know people are like what you know I always get asked what's my purpose what's my purpose and I keep saying if you walk with Jesus in the steps you're guaranteed to be with him in the miles if you walk with him today you're guaranteed to be in his will tomorrow and then next day and the next day and so it's just walking it out and being being consistent I hope this is making sense I feel like I'm just going way too fast but hopefully uh, you're catching this hopefully the slides help a little bit but we also need to know ability is inadequate if effort is inconsistent you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're not consistent, it doesn't do any good. I love what Kevin Durant said. He said, hard work trumps talent if talent doesn't work hard. I share this with Judah all the time. You know, it's just like, look, you got to put in the work, not just with sports, but even with, you know, your academics and things like that. And in your, in your relationship with Christ and things, sometimes it's just about digging in. The hare in that story could have beat that tortoise 10 times over, but he thought that, you know, uh, the effort could wait until the goal, you know, was close. He put effort off until it was too late. And so we learned the moral of the story is if, if you have all you need to win the race, and everybody on here does, the only thing that can stop you from winning the race is a lack of consistent effort. Please get this. 
The only thing that can stop you from fulfilling your purpose is a lack of consistent effort. And I want to add, and surrender. It's seeking God. It's being diligent. It's being consistent. It's not giving up. Remember, this is a process. There's going to be mess ups. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be boring times and mundane seasons of life, but stay faithful. Don't quit. Don't ever give up. Refuse it because the only way you can fail is if you quit. The only way you can fail is if you quit. And so as with anything, you're going to get out of it what, what you put into it. Uh, there's going to be times where you're not going to feel like getting on here. There's going to be times where you're tired, where you're feeling uninspired, where you're feeling blah or frustrated. You might even be there tonight. There's going to be times where you just don't want to get on here. But my experience has been that those are the times when I needed this the most, if nothing else, to see faces. And to get around some people, even if it's electronically, and those are also the times where typically I've gotten the most out of it. Those are the breakthrough times. So when you're not feeling like it, get on. When you're feeling like it, get on. And I want you to know throughout this semester, we're always going to give you our best. I don't ever want to waste anybody's time ever because time is too valuable. I believe it's our greatest commodity. But we also uh, want to use this time, I shared this last time, to allow for some other people to share. It's typically not like this. Typically, you know, there's a whole slew uh, or at least two or three people sharing on here just going rapid fire, pop, pop, pop tonight. I just wanted to lay a foundation. But we want to give people the opportunity to develop as communicators, to grow their voice and develop their voice. Voice. And so can we just agree to be gracious, you know, when others are on here giving their best, maybe even if they're not as polished, can we just be like, man, you know what, I'm going to give you my best back because I know you're giving me your best. You know, we haven't done this yet tonight. We'd put a one in the chat. If you say, yeah, pastor, I'll, I'll do that. I'll be gracious to those people. You're not going to be like, oh, man, tonight wasn't any good because this person wasn't any good and they spoke this or they didn't do this or whatever. Let's not do that. Because I know that we would want that grace extended to us if we were the ones sharing, right? We would want that same grace. And so with that, I'm going to ask you every time, I'm, I'm going to ask you to give your best. You know, come on here. Pay attention. Be engaged. Take notes. Just don't kind of have us on in the background doing whatever you're going to do. Get on here for 30 minutes and give it your best 30 minutes. Because this isn't simply about education. It's about application. That means we need to be both hearers and doers. Does that make sense? See, I want to challenge everyone on here to make a point to, uh, here's my little thing telling me that, ah, oh, no, sorry, I think I just upgraded our account. <laughs> anyway, I want to challenge everybody on here to uh, make a point to do the action steps every week. We try not to make them massive. We try not to make them so daunting that you're never going to have time to because we understand hearing builds faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And hearing is wonderful, but it doesn't make us a leader. Doing the word makes us leaders. And so don't just get on in here and here. Man, that was good. Awesome. Let's be doers of the word. Because applying what's taught puts you on the fast track to growth, maturity, and even opens up the door for opportunity. And so when you apply what's being taught, that's what happened. And so I heard this statement. I should have made a slide for it, but please get this. In the kingdom of God, physical obedience brings spiritual release. There's your note. There's your tweet, Twitter thing. There's your Facebook post, whatever. In the kingdom of God, Physical obedience brings spiritual release. And so that's what I had for us tonight. I'm going to stop there because I want to keep going, but I'm going to stop, especially for the sake of time. Are you ready for an incredible, powerful, potentially life-changing semester? I want you to know if you're on here, I believe in you. I believe this is going to be significant for us. I believe it's going to be significant for our church. And ultimately, I believe it's going to be uh, significant uh, for the people that we've been privileged to serve and lead. And so with that, I want to pray briefly, and I have two action steps for us. Very simple, week one action steps. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for everybody that's on here. God, I thank you, God, that we can get back into the swing of things. Jesus, we don't take this lightly. God, we want to maximize every opportunity we have. 
God, to grow, to learn, to develop, and to do, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that you would grow us. God, that we would make more of a difference than we ever have before. Father, that we would live intentionally. We would live on purpose. God, that we would apply what's being taught, God, uh, throughout the week. God, not just here, but on Sunday mornings and in other life groups that we're a part of, Father, that we would be appliers, God, of this. In Jesus' name, God, I bless everybody on here. I thank you for their heart. I thank you for their desire. I thank you, God, that you're going to grow them, Father, and that they would understand that they're a part of the vision of the house, and they're a part of making a difference, God, and that uh, they're people that they haven't even met yet that need what they have. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that we would be a consistent people, that we would be a faithful people, and that we would be finishers, Father, that we would be leaders of integrity, that we would be leaders that are reliable, Father, and that we would be willing to pay the price, God, so that others can be reached. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Praise God. Um, I'm not used to taking the whole time. That was kind of weird for me. It's not going to be that way uh, in future weeks. But uh, here's the two action steps that I have for us. First one is calendar each week Zoom. Put it in the calendar, write it on your physical calendar, or put it in your phone, have a reminder, whatever. But let's make this a part of our every week. And then the second action step is get in starting point. If you haven't gone through starting point, I think everybody on here probably has. But if you haven't, if you haven't completed it, complete starting point. But then also find a place to serve on the dream team. We want to see the dream team multiply because leaders lead the way. And if we're on here, that's our heart's desire. We want to be leaders. We want to make that happen. Did I just hang up? No, I did not. There we go. Ha ha. So that's um, it. I believe I want to let everybody know. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Please know you have a pastor who loves you. And I pray for you every day without fail. And uh, I want you to express your love to somebody by inviting somebody you love to church this Sunday. This Sunday is going to be a game changer. It's the final week of Double Dare, and we have a doozy of a final dare. And so I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to unmute everything, and I pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful day.